uh, yeah, fun. we have uh, we're gonna have tons of matches. I think we actually need to get into it immediately. We're gonna be having Jewel versus Looney Tunes. Now, I have not seen these two play in quite a bit because. Yeah, COVID is sort of coming the way, but now we get to see a little bit of Jewel with his very technical Robin here against Looney. And granted, you know Snake, he's going to zone one way or another. But uh, Jewel does also like to sort of play that mid range until he can get an aggression, and his conversions are quite great, honestly. Yeah, and already we're seeing kind of them go back and forth here, but Jewel with a bit more control, only taking about 38%, and oh man, those moves just hit so hard every time he manages to get a single hit in. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about um, PST, uh, PS2 as far as uh, Jewel's favor, because Jewel, as you can see, has got a lot more of just horizontal coverage here, but Snake with the grenades can cover the platforms a little bit more consistently. Typically, it's going to be arc fire with Robin, although he's getting some conversions off it right now. Yeah, but for the most part, we're seeing Looney kind of stay at that horizontal range, and he is paying dearly for it. Hasn't really found any alternate angle of attack, and just that's another one of those hits. Robin's moves, they if you get hit by a single projectile, sometimes it can lead to death. Just they lock you in place like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it's hard to come back from a deficit as Snake sometimes, because Snake's aggressive options are not terrible, but he does have to work to get his way in, and he much prefers making his own space as preferred to closing it. That being said, Snake has so much kill power that once he gets a little bit of more damage, like at this point, would up tilt be killing? Um, we're getting at the point where I would cringe if I got hit by it. So yes, it's getting scary at this point. Okay. Oh, we Mix might up. see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he tries to go for it, but good rollout from Jewel. But yep. and there it is. There it is, the anti-air. I was going to say, actually, so up tilt from Snake is normally a really good anti-air. But for the most part, Jewel isn't jumping that much at those close range. Robin doesn't mm -hmm. have great air speed. And so most of the time, you'll see, right, right now, he likes to be grounded. Mm -hmm. Oh. Another thing you might notice is that a lot of his aerial options are approaching forward. You see that uh, drifting forward arc fire. You'll see drifting forward nair or fair. Um, it's kind of, you don't see Jewel space too much with uh, moving back aerials on this one. He typically likes to move around and then look for conversions when he feel like they'll hit, um, especially because he can run out his Levin Sword there. Yeah, honestly, so far the game plan is just, you talked before about how Snake's approach can be limited, and oh, oh no. he's healing up the damage also. Whatever Looney Tunes has done. Yeah, he's taking just, a sip of the stock, man. <laughs> if things are even... Things are. He, Looney Tunes is farther away from taking this stock than he was just a moment ago. <laughs> I didn't even need to be going for those Nosferatu's, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it could have converted them into an actual stock at this point. Well, now the thing is also, um, what are Snake's options at low percents if you're not opening yourself up to grab as far as combos go? You know, at a bit of a higher percent, I could see Snake getting more stage control. Say if you get hit by a grenade at 40% compared to 16, that can be the difference between knocking you off stage and just knocking you to the other side of it. Yeah, Jewel, though, doing a good job cleaning up that stock. You do not want to have Snake with a whole bunch of rage. And I, Robin, it feels like sometimes the character can struggle to kill just because if the opponent is playing really effectively around, you know, the longer range options, then that's the, he has to close the distance to finish things off. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, the thing about that, though, is that you do have to play a little bit aggressive when you're coming from behind, and you do have to make reads on that. If you read, oh, an arc fire, I have to air dodge, roll, find some option to get past that, and you might walk your way right into a nair, and that can set you up for a potentially dangerous situation. Yeah, now, also worth noting, so far, Jewel has been getting back to stage very, very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been seeing Nikita come out, some other options, and it, that recovery from Robin can kind of be exploitable. Uh, just the fact that he has no hitbox on it. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be seeing maybe, you know, at least if... It feels like Looney Tunes is trying to exploit it, but he hasn't actually seen that to fruition just yet. And Oh, nice. Good conversion. And that's the sort of thing where I feel like it might also be worth watching the the meter of the arc fires in the, that, mm -hmm. that are, are above Robin's icon. It can obviously be hard, but you will then at least have a sort of perspective of how many he has left. Because you saw there was one after another after another into the corner. And when you're trapped there, you're like, I have to make something happen. But mm -hmm. also, you can kind of stall them out. You know, if he just keeps arc firing over and over again, I mean, your shield is going to be really tiny after a while. Mm -hmm, but, that's um, true. And uh, there's also shield pokes as well with Robin. If um, And like I said, again, because uh, Jewel will do those advancing arc fires there, if he's close enough on your shield and the shield is low enough, he can shield poke. Or shield break with his, uh, I believe it's the down smash, which slams down and has the multi-hits on that. Yeah. That is particularly dangerous and... 
not something you want to do, especially at that higher percent. Yeah, and I do really kind of want to, we're probably going to be seeing it more of it here on Battlefield because it's going to be a smaller stage. The way that Jewel slowly takes stage mm -hmm. bit by bit, and then you see once Snake is in the corner, it is just so hard. You know, those tiny, tiny advancing arc fires, eventually he has nowhere to run. Mm -hmm. So I think that finding ways out of the corner or trying to prevent Jewel from taking that stage control in the first place is going to be really key for Looney Tunes. So far, he has does have a much stronger start here. The third hit of that down are not connecting, meaning that whatever stage positioning he would have gotten kind of gone. But honestly, this is looking like a nice. totally different no game. Tag. All right, so he's got the stock lead. Now this is Snake at his best, able to make all the space that he wants. He's got three platforms to play around with in case he wants to keep out of Jules' range. This could look very good for him. All right. Oh, oh another great nice. Nosferatu. Which is, the fact that it's a command grab means he can beat out a shielding snake. Yeah. And, but at the same time, look at this from Looney Tunes. Only 39%. This is where, you know, we said before how, oh, snake from behind. It can be kind of difficult. This is what snake can do when he has the lead. All of this damage output that you're just seeing constantly. Oh, another good forward tilt to put Jewel off stage. And the damage keeps on coming. That C4 didn't connect, but... I felt like <laughs> Jules sealed it out at the very last possible second. And this is an incredibly aggressive way to get himself back on his... Oh, no. Okay, he lives. Yep. Not that high of a percent just oh. yet. That will do it, though. Nikita, very strong. But, um, yes, Jewel working himself back to the stage very aggressively here. Snake and Looney specifically trying to keep his space back, you know, making sure that Jewel doesn't push him way forward when he has the lead. I all right, we're going to have to do regular PSA updates on the location of those C4s because both we and Jewel did not realize it was right above him. Okay, that's going to be another one of those Nosferatus. Yep. I honestly really like that as an option. So, although at this point, Jewel is down by quite a bit. Th two stocks to one, and that is a clean, untouched stock on Looney right now. It is not an impossible deficit, though. This is definitely something that Robin is capable of, especially in Jules' hands with these very explosive combos and setups that we've known him for. I do think that one of the hardest parts is that because he's at higher percent, he's going to be off stage from every single That'll hit. do it. And then he's going to have trouble recovering. It felt like that game, the big difference was all of a sudden, Looney was hitting those edge guards. Mm -hmm. consistently. All three stocks actually were from an edge guard or converted off of an edge guard at the very least. So um, as we move on to this game three now between these two, I think that, I feel like that smaller stage definitely helped out Looney. The mm -hmm. fact that hits would more reliably end up putting him off stage for one. So I think, I'm not sure, I think I actually missed what we're going to be getting, but I would expect a longer stage like Town and City. Mm -hmm. uh, Town and City. Do you have any other thoughts on like the advantages of this specifically for Jewel? Well, the platforms moving in and out are interesting in the sense that uh, for the ground game, Snake kind of likes to have those multiple elevations to make it a little bit trickier and harder to follow. Um, and it, Robin is not the most complex in a no platform neutral sort of fight, but it can be a little difficult and he has a very simple mix up in like, am I going to arc fire? Am I going to Nair, etc. And he can play it relatively safe. Yeah, and I do know that Jewel does like FD, so the FD variant, you know, just without those platforms, it might be not necessarily that complex, but it is effective. And oh, we are seeing that effectiveness oh, at chase. play right now. Nice! The air the patience. Just, that was a whole stock right there. Jewel barely looking like he has any damage, and now we're back to that game one situation mm -hmm. where he has a massive lead, and Looney Tunes has to be uh, killing, taking the stock very soon. <gasps> nice, he's got that range down. Beautiful, beautiful recovery right there. And now Jewel's back on stage. He can start racking up damage just mm -hmm. with these projectiles, arc fires, even the little tiny, is that the L thunder or is that the normal thunder? It's just uh, like, thunder. It's yeah. just the normal thunder. And then we've got a position here that is perfect for Jewel. We've got these two platforms on the very edge here. Maybe nice for Looney if he wants to, oh no. If he, I was going to say if he wants to recover, but... Um, it doesn't help him get any extra dimensions for his keep away game or trying to control space with the platforms on the side there. And now that Jewel is recovering, oh, well, the platforms are now gone. Now he's got to make his own way over. Yeah, the stalls from Jewel are making a huge difference. He's trying to take as long as he can while off stage just to try and avoid the Nikita, avoid those projectiles. Finally, Looney cleans up the stock, but he's at 44, and he doesn't have no Sprout or any way to heal. At this point, every damage he takes, like, that's going to 
just stick with him for the rest of the game, and he is one game away from being knocked into losers. And, you know, we really didn't dwell that much on the quality of players, but Looney has some amazing wins on his belt. He's a fantastic player, and he does not want to be knocked into a loser's bracket this early, especially because I think the winner of this gets top cut. Yep. So we're going to be going up to... Um He's coming down. This is especially rough, too. The platforms are nice for Snake to land on and potentially mix up his landing, but you're landing into a Robin who could kill you in one hit. Yeah. Right, oh, nice. nice job with that C4, C4, but at this point, 169%. The next love tap yep. will probably do it. All right, Ooh. cool. Gets him back off stage. Let's see if we can get the edge guard with Nikita. Yes, we can. All right. This is still doable. This it, is very volatile and dangerous, but this is doable. It's, he has a path to victory, but unfortunately that path closed in an instant. Jewel just getting that back air, exactly the move he needed to. And that's going to be a 2-1 victory. Jewel moving on into top cut. Looney mm -hmm. Tunes is going to have to fight his way through losers to get the same privilege. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot through, uh, especially those last couple games, um, Looney trying to make these reads to get in, which is necessary from a deficit, um, because you saw him do stuff like jump over that arc fire and get that backer, which is cure to kill, which is what he needed, but that's a risk. That's not like some fast auto cancel Joker aerial you gotta work with. You have to put yourself on the line a little bit. And at the end there, he made the wrong call and it cost him his life. And that's just yeah. how it goes when you're at a deficit like that.